Hello, and welcome to this edition of Void Heart Symphony. Uh, Void Heart Symphony is a uh, Powered by the Apocalypse role-playing game uh, based loosely on the Persona series with influences from games like uh, Shin Megami Tensei as well as Psychonauts. Um, that's essentially about a group of rebellious young teens, adults, uh, rebellious people who... Uh, try and make their world a better place by contending with an evil force uh, known as the castle, which kind of exists in a separate parallel world. Uh, my name is Eric. Uh, I will be the GM for this game. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, Max, you mind introducing yourself? Uh, sure. I'm Max. I'm playing the character Harry Roche. Uh, my pronouns are he, him as well. Okay. And Merrick? Yeah, I'm Merrick. Uh, I'm playing Arthur, the, the slacker student, Arthur Zoe, and I go by him. Okay, and John? Yes, I'm John. Uh, I am creating a character now, but I did c come up with it. It <laughs> is uh, Johnny Beige. He's a celebrity, and uh, my pronouns are he, him. Johnny Beige. Yes. Like beige, the color? Yes, or... like the color. It rhymes is with that cage. A stage name, or is that? It rhymes with that... cage. <laughs> okay. I like it. I get it now. Because right. it like it sounds almost um, like too boring to be a real name, but also mm -hmm. is very clearly a stage name. It's very mm -hmm. yeah. very interesting. Um, all right. So just kind of to recap what's been going on. Um, Last time, our heroes, uh, after having kind of uh, dealt with uh, the cognitive world they were inhabiting, uh, ventured back out into their real lives, um, finding that uh, time had kind of gotten a little bit away from them. Um, Athena, uh, one of the player characters, was called into their guidance counselor's office at school and placed on probation. Uh, Harry Roach, uh, Max's character, was picked up by truancy officers, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, our Suteraz, uh was nearly kidnapped by a rival arcade owner, um, and Arthur... Spent nearly? His... Oh, wait, no, yeah, he escaped. He was successfully kidnapped. He was successfully kidnapped, but then managed to escape because they didn't realize he was an intelligent frog who could just, like, lift up the... Um, top of the terrarium they put him in uh, and then escape that way uh, and Arthur uh, got to know Sprite, a spirit of the cognitive realm uh, with a library of impossible size um, also uh, meanwhile Arsuteraz and Athena uh, investigated what had happened to Harry um, and found that their school uh, Athena and Harry's school was somehow in on it um, and that the, uh, the the name of the officer on the report uh, was this guy, uh, Officer John Torres. So, uh, with that established, um, let's talk a little bit uh, about John's character, Johnny Beige. Uh, he's going to be an icon uh, with the Chariot Arcana, um, and his kind of connection to another character... Uh, will be which of you gives me a place to crash when home is too far away or too much of a burden? Uh, so the question goes then to Harry and Arthur. Who, which one of you do you think is connected to this guy? Mm. I mean, I certainly could fit the bill coming from a wealthier neighborhood mm -hmm. uh, meeting with the celebrity actor guy. Uh, yeah, he could be a, I could see him being like a friend of your family, maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, totally. Before cool. he got really big. <laughs> mm -hmm. Stays in the guest house, that sort of thing. Yeah, that sort of like weird uncle uh, who's also an actor sort of guy. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, let's go. Family, long time family friend. Okay, sounds good. Um, 
So speaking of which, how about how old is Johnny Beige? Um, I I did pick adult, so uh, like around like twenty five, I would assume. Okay. Um, and is the role you're going for prodigal or traitor? A prodigal. Prodigal. Okay. And he's kind of like, um, we'll say, uh, you said celebrity, but is he an actor? Is he? I was gonna say like you know like a pop star who delves into acting sometimes. <laughs> That's what I was going. Okay, He's an influencer, good. pop star, so not... influencer. So I'm so I'm totally not ripping off Johnny Cage. So nice. <laughs> okay. Uh... Sorry, my pen died while I was making notes. Um. So yeah, uh, Johnny, you were kind of staying at this nice couple's house um the roaches the roaches um as they prefer to be called and uh in their guest house um and their kid uh harry has gone missing um max do you think this is the first time harry's ever run away or is this like a regular thing this would be a regular thing for harry Okay, cool. Um, so it's a regular thing. So his parents aren't too terribly concerned about it. Um, but you maybe have an inkling or part of a reason to start being concerned about it. Just because, like, it's been a while um, and Harry hasn't come back. And uh, his parents, again, don't seem very concerned. But it is... It has been longer than you would expect him to be away. Uh, so um, that's kind of what's going on uh, from your angle. Does that sound good? Uh, John, can you hear me? Oh, wait, yeah. So what were you saying? Yeah, no, I was still filling out things. <laughs> oh, no, no problem. I was just saying, like, kind of where you are in the story is that... Uh, this kid, um, who's kind of a family friend, Harry, has gone missing. His parents aren't worried about, but maybe you're starting to get worried because he's been away for a while. Okay, yeah, no, that, that sounds right. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay. Um, so with that established, um, let's talk about how Harry went missing, actually. Uh, so I'm thinking... So after Harry got back to the real world, he didn't go back to his parents' place, right? He decided to effectively run away. Mm -hmm. um, where where would he go? Where would he kind of end up? Mm, he probably would have first ended up with his covenant uh, over in uh, Algiers mm -hmm. um, to sort of like get perspective on everything. Okay. Um, that sounds reasonable to me. Uh, and again, your covenant is the Empress, uh, named mm -hmm. Sarah, um, mm -hmm. who is uh, a artist uh, mm -hmm. who is um, battling a chronic illness. Um, and uh, yeah, she um, is a little confused Wait, is it, is this the first time you've run away and hung out with her, or um, do you think you've done this before? Is she used to this? Um, she would have seen it before. Uh, it would probably be more like a situation where she thinks I've been running away, but she doesn't really know my relationship with my parents. Right, right. Like, is this actually okay, or is this actually, like, him running away? Mm -hmm. uh, but she would probably have strong feeling or strong inclinations that uh, I ran away again. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, so I think she probably like gives you some space um, and says you can stay for as long as you need. But it's kind of implied that you can't really stay as long as you need because like um, you're essentially sleeping on her couch at this point. Um, mm. but, uh, yeah, um, she would ask, like, are you, so are you going to still go to school? Like, 
you know, what are you, what are you going to do with your time now? Mm. Yeah, I would be going back to school because I, I would want to get a grip or I would be getting a grip on uh, what exactly happened uh, and uh, what exactly the ramifications of uh, what's his face. Uh, oh, your teacher. Um, yeah, my teacher who the goo pretty much melted. Yeah, yeah, your your gooified <laughs> teacher. Um, so yeah, so when you go back to school, like um, that teacher is gone, Ron Sarver. Um, obviously, well, maybe not obviously, mm -hmm. but he's just not around. Um, and if you ask around about it at all, you hear that, like, he suddenly, like, essentially called in sick and is taking a break, um, from school for a while. Um, and no one's quite sure why. Um, is that something Harry would, like, kind of, like, stick his nose into and try and investigate, or? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like, he wants to know what exactly happened with his teacher, like, how it ended up like this, and who's who's trying to hide everything. Right, exactly. Um, so, yeah, so as you kind of keep asking questions about this, um, you uh, eventually get pulled into... Um, let's say, yeah, the guidance counselor's office, um, who essentially asks, says to you, hey, you've, you've been out of school for a few days. Um, we also noticed uh, that one of your friends, Athena Lee, she's also been missing for a little bit. Do you have any idea what happened to her? Friend who? Athena Lee. Tina you're you're in the same class. This is this is um uh, uh, Tina's character. Do you want to like play it like you don't have any idea who she is or? Uh. Mm. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, we didn't do too much interaction. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had more interaction with Arsus than, uh, Tina's character and, uh, even Merrick's character. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say probably slow to catch on at first. Uh, I guess if they're filling in details, I might figure it out and it all fit together. Yeah, right. Uh, like they give, they give you like a rough physical description and you're like, oh, <laughs> Uh. Hmm. Yeah, I would probably respond like, "Yeah, I think I've seen her, but I haven't. I don't know her or anything like that." Like, relatively not giving details, uh, particularly because I don't have all the details. Mm-hmm. Uh. Yeah, we um. We, we heard that she might have been caught up in something. Um, you've been asking about uh, Ron, right? Uh, or, sorry, Mr. Sarver, uh, in your mm -hmm. case. Um, yeah, the school uh, just heard that he called out sick. Um, have you heard anything else about him? Mm. Uh, no. Um, uh, that's what I'm trying to find out. Like, uh, he had some, uh, he's always been trying to get me into stuff and it's weird that he's just gone. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a great educator. Um, listen, um, the police actually have a few questions about what happened to Athena. Um, and, uh, we were, we were hoping that you wouldn't mind, uh, talking to them briefly. After school. So here's where I'm going to say yes and not do that, or say I'm not 
are going to try and not do that. <laughs> right. Fair. Hmm. Um, so you're like, yeah, sure. I'll do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll meet you guys by like the front gate of the school. He says, okay, great. Uh, um, sounds good. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. You can go back to class now and you're okay. dismissed. Um, so yeah, so it gets to be towards the end of school. What's, what's Harry's plan? Um, it would be either to jump one of the back fences, whether that's like climbing on garbage cans or anything like that, um, to skip out the back. Uh, and he would probably be make my way back towards Algiers. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and do a roll real quick for pass beneath notice. So, uh, All right. let's explain the roll mechanics of this game again. Um, so basically how this works uh, is it's a move um, where you check against your character's infamy level. Uh, in your case, your infamy would be... Uh, four. Four. Uh, so you're going to roll two dice uh, and tell me the result of each die individually. 2d6, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, also, one thing is I know I had a bunch of void and world points from last time. Did those dissipate, or how exactly do those? No, let's stick around. Okay, cool. All right, rolling. Uh, I have a five and a three. A five and a three, okay. So, because one of them, one of the rolls was over, but the other was under, um, you, it's called a weak hit. Um, mm. So we look at the weak hit results on uh, this move. Um so you have to leave this situation right now or be discovered. Uh, someone's suspicious of you, and you won't be able to dodge the next time, or you get separated from your allies, pulled out of position. Um, and on a weak hit, you have to pick two of these options. I only want to leave now. Right. Um, sorry, I'm going through the pages again to find the right thing this matchup. What were the three options again? This is under mundane moves, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, leave the situation right now or be discovered. Someone's suspicious of you. You won't be able to dodge them next time. You get separated from your allies or pulled out of position. Uh, let's say someone's suspicious of me. I got spotted on the way jumping the fence. Right, yeah. Uh, and you hear kind of like the police sirens in the distance mm -hmm. or like someone calls after you and like, hey, you kid. Um, as you uh, dodge um, the cops the first time. Um, mm. So for the sake of clarity, um, it's up to you like how this goes down, but at some point the cops are going to catch up to you and basically grab you and get you off the streets. Um, is there anything you would like to do before that happens? Uh, like, do you want to go back and talk to your uh, covenant or try and figure some more stuff out? It's up to you. Uh, yeah, I would stop by my Covenant, uh, tell her that I need to go immediately. Mm -hmm. um, whatever advice she has to give me on that. Uh, then, not really sure where to turn there. I'd probably go try to start heading towards uh, either uh, uh, one of the other player characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would assume sometime between me and getting to them, uh, yeah. I would be pinched. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, she asks if there's anyone you want her to call or anything like that uh, before you leave. Mm. Um, so, since I know Athena is indisposed, mm -hmm. uh, our Sue is a frog. <laughs> uh, so I'd probably be like, there's this one guy. Uh, uh, and give just a brief character description of, uh, of Merrick's... Uh, uh, I don't know if we exchanged phone numbers or anything like that. We have not. That came up yeah. last time. Oh, good. We know each other exists, but we don't really have any means of communicating. Yet. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, in that case, let's dial this back a, a few notches. Uh, I'll have her call um, uh, John's character to tell my parents that I'm okay. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so in the intervening time, um, you get pinched by the police. Um, they basically, you know, uh, pull up ahead of you in a patrol car, grab you, throw you in the back, and... Mm -hmm take you somewhere you're not quite sure where mm. uh so yeah john your character johnny um gets a call uh on tuesday um from a young woman that sounds rather concerned um and she says hi um is this uh johnny beige um i'm a friend of uh of harry's So, uh, what's wrong with Harry? <laughs> well, he's he's missing. Um, I I heard from one of my friends that like the police picked him up for something, um, and uh, he he asked me to like call and let his parents know that he's okay. But I'm really not sure that's actually true. Uh, did you hear from him directly, or? Yeah, yeah. He he came here first. And then he got picked up by the cops. He seemed worried. Uh, he seemed like he was in some sort of trouble. That's not money trouble, is it? <laughs> I I don't know. It's it's really un. It, he didn't he didn't say. Uh, okay, I I guess I have to go and uh, uh, see. Do you know what department he went to? Or no, I've been calling around and no one will even tell me where he is. Oh, jeez. Well, I, I guess I have to go out and find him. <laughs> uh, uh, do you want to join me? <laughs> um, she says, I'm um, not really able to do that right now. Um, but please let me know if there's anything else I can do to help. Okay. Uh, not sure yet because everything's so vague at the moment. But uh. <laughs> Right, right. Okay, sounds good. Um, and she hangs up. Um, so yeah, so we advance to this Tuesday, um, and let's kind of talk about how each of you are going to spend this day. Um, we haven't heard from Arthur in a while. What's, what's Arthur up to on Tuesday? Um, I'm probably going to start by going to school because I don't really have a plan for... Um, last time around, my plan was to have the, was to just, actually, yeah, you know what, never mind. The plan, the plan now I've decided is that, uh, to ditch school partway through in order to try to, like, run across Torres and somehow get Arsu into his like vehicle and so that he can spy on him because he's a frog <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's not that's not a terrible plan at all um, um so i'm gonna be but i'm going like the goal is not to get like picked up by him it is i'm assuming that he will be looking around like cruising for delinquents and i am gonna try to like Stealthily shot the frog through his window or something. I don't know. Okay, we'll so like, to it. so so you don't want him to notice you. You want, to, but you want to get the frog into his. Car. I want to plant Arsu on on his person in some capacity. Okay, uh, but you're gonna try and do yet. I don't have a good way of um, mm -hmm. escaping if I were to fall into his clutch. Like I don't know what I'm gonna say if, if he's like, hey. You're ditching school. I'm just like, yeah, I am. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what you want me to do about that. Um, so yeah, so um, it sounds like the move here is again probably going to be uh, passed beneath notice. Um, yep. So yeah, uh, if you want to go ahead and roll it. All right, a three and a two. Mm -hmm. My infamy is three 
is three. So unfortunately, that's probably going to be a miss. Um, mm -hmm. So in this case, um, you're not really able to uh, either... Well, it's up to you. Uh, are you just like not able to find him? Or does he find you and you kind of have to deal with this now? Uh, let's get found or let's let's say that like while trying to skulk around he notices me um and we'll just have a, we'll have a little confrontation here and i'll get to see what one of these other moves do maybe mm -hmm. um, um so yeah um so yeah you hear the the whoop whoop of the sirens mm -hmm. uh and he pulls over again um roll with the window rolled down sees you uh, and he says, again, Hey, kid, I seen you, I, I saw you yesterday. Where do, what are you doing out of school? Um, I was looking for an officer of the law, actually. Um, because, uh, I heard about, uh, an illicit gathering that's going to be taking place. Um, and uh, I didn't have a good way of getting into contact with anybody without one of my peers noticing. You know how we kids are. Right. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I can, I can take a report. What it, what what illicit gathering are you talking about? Um, I will. Hmm. I will make up some kind of. I probably know a couple of like other places that are sort of like the construction site I hang out at. Mm -hmm. uh, I will make up like there's going to be some sick rave that's going to go down at, like, some place such as that. They're going to do tons of sex drugs. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, this sounds like maybe you're using a connection in this case. Uh, uh, that implies I need to draw on a covenant for it, which I don't... You're, you're kind of implying... On, you're drawing on, like, because the construction site is, like, linked to that covenant... I'm not going to say you got to like explicitly name drop the name of the guy, Francis, but like, uh -huh. I, I feel like the connection route there is because I hang out at abandoned lots with Francis a lot. I know that the police would suspect there are raves at abandoned lots. Okay. Sure. Man. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at these moves. There really isn't a way to just do something. Is there? <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's not like not. a move that's just kind of like overcome an obstacle. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is not fate, um, unfortunately. All right. Sure. Use a connection. Who's this check against black? Uh, two and a four. So that's one over. One. Okay. Uh, so on a hit, target treats you as a peer for a time. Uh, on a weak hit, you have to pick one of these options here. Um, there, um, hmm. I mean, ending this interaction isn't the worst for me, so I will go with that. Okay, so yeah, like, he kind of, like, jots down something but like clearly isn't very interested and he's like uh-huh yeah rave sure um okay kid um i guess go back to school yeah <laughs> um so here's a position where if possible i would like for like the if 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 Byron were here, this is when Arsu would try to make a check to stealth into his car. I feel um, like like that is necessary to advance the plot, so we're just going to say that happens. 
Like, Great. You have distracted him for long enough for Arsu to <laughs> sneak into his car, effectively. All righty. Um, and he kind of closes his notebook uh, and he says, I, I got my eye on you, kid. Stay out of trouble. Yeah. I just, through a lot of this interaction, I've just sort of been, like, staring unblinkingly at him. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, Arthur is not confident. Arthur is kind of, Arthur will, like, say a lie and then be, like, instant, like, is he going to buy it? And, like, very obviously be kind of, like, waiting in anticipation of, like, uh, is it working? Mm-hmm. Are we doing it? <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Um, well, this is, uh, is... Uh, yeah, let's do this. Um, is there anything, uh, while this is going on, um, Arthur or, uh, Johnny would like to be doing, uh, on Tuesday? After this, I just go back to school and then do school stuff for the next action. Yeah, I figured. I was thinking, you know, because I was going to be, uh, uh, looking for, uh, Harry, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was going to see, uh, like, uh, it, is it okay if my character had, like, a like a confidant in, like, the police station? Or does that take, <laughs> uh, like, uh, building up a character or something? <laughs> uh, well, you get one contact for free. Um, and uh, it's one of the three options given usually are kind of what's suggested. Um, or you can kind of make one up on the spot. Um, so, uh, you can definitely... Oh, I see. I see the suggested ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, so let me think about that for a second. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah. But, but I mean, but ultimately what I'm thinking of doing to say that, you know, it's like, it's, it's going around town and, uh, trying to figure out where, you know, like, uh, I mean, I did look at the, I did look at the recap, but I'm going to be looking around, uh, for, uh, like where exactly Harry is, you know, I'm I'm asking around. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Uh, all right, uh, Max, do you have an idea? Any ideas what? Um, well, well, let's talk about where Harry is and kind of what his situation is. Um, yeah, that'd probably be important to kind of give you some context. Um, so yeah, so you end up in this correctional facility, um, and you realize uh, that you're able to contact. Uh, your friends, teammates, comrades, whatever, uh, via the key that you uh, received when you were in the cognitive world. Um, And you can kind of send impressions, ideas, kind of a basic level of communication to them. Um, So they at least know that you're in trouble. Um, As for the actual circumstances you find yourself in, um, you're in a uh essentially um a juvenile detention facility with uh you know um you're in a room with a few bunk beds there's three other um young men there who have kind of been ignoring you as much as possible um there's you know kind of like uh, a very sparse mess hall you're allowed to go in um maybe like um kind of a recreation room with an old beat up TV and like a ping pong table that has one of the legs broken um, and an exercise yard that's essentially just like uh, a bare basketball hoop and uh, a mostly deflated basketball. Hmm. Um, And there's also guards. not too many of them, but there are a few guards like positioned throughout the facility, usually in little offices, uh, watching you all kind of disinterestedly. Hmm. But I haven't been told what they want yet or anything like that. It just seems like I got picked up for truancy or they, they uh, don't even give you a reason. They just yeah. said, get in the back of the car. And if you resisted, they put you in the back of the car. Hmm. You got kidnapped. Essentially, you got kidnapped. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So, I would explore the facility, 
checking out any like uh, exits, like weaknesses in the fences, uh, looking at the areas outside the facility through whatever windows I can. Uh, and if I can send impressions, uh, it would be like uh, giving me sort of visions or pictures of sort of like landmarks and features of the area. Okay. Uh, this sounds like rebel eyes to me that you're sizing up a situation. Uh, so it'll be another check this time against heat. All right. Is it two? So that's going to be rough. You want to roll over. So you, you should be fine actually. Well, I rolled a five and a one. A five and a one. So a weak hit. Uh, so mm -hmm. on a weak hit, ask one. Uh, it looks like your question is probably who slash what can I make use of here? Mm -hmm. Or what's my best way out? Um, uh, it would be more of what's the best, yeah, the best way out. Because I'm trying to also provide information to the rest of the group on like the weaknesses mm -hmm. of the facility so that they can help. Um, yeah, this isn't a very well-guarded facility. Um, you would kind of guess from your surroundings in the exercise yard that you're probably in, um, Orleans Parish somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, they don't really consider you running away to be a threat. Um, so it looks like, uh, the exercise yard is the least monitored section um, and therefore would be the best place to try and stage some sort of escape, um, either by, I don't know, like tying sheets together and throw over or like having someone on, on, on the other side, like throw you something to climb over or something like that. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh... or like literally just like going under the fence or like breaking it, whatever. So just to make sure I'm getting this right, is Arthur and Arsu just doing their own thing right now? Or they're, are they related to me? They're sort of related to you. Um, I feel like, Merrick, correct me if I'm wrong, the intent here was to find out more about the guy who arrested you. Um, cause, mm. Or, or what is the intent mainly to find out where Harry is? What? what I thought it was the guy kidnapping Arsu was the... No, that's something different. Don't worry about okay. that. <laughs> that's that's all that's all resolved, basically. Okay. Um the the intention the plan that we came up with at the end of the last time was that it would be easiest to use the ability that we have that I guess you don't know about yet to um uh travel in between the real world and the other one and like uh, warp into wherever you are, grab you, and warp out. Um, oh. And to do that, we need to... Uh, I forget. I think it was Sprite that explained this to us. Mm -hmm. To do that, we have to know... Um, to get to the equivalent of where you are in the castle world, we have to know how the boss of your location uh, envisions themselves and their part of the castle. Mm. Um, the boss of your location not necessarily being like the literal like owner of the facility. I don't remember if we clarified how we figure out who the boss is or not. Um, we, you know what? We, it was probably part of that long off-camera conversation that I had with Sprite in between exchanging proverbs so sure right um somehow but we yeah so we figured out that it's going to be this cop guy so now the my plan and the plan that we had come up with before um with the others was to get uh arsu to just spy on the cop until he figured out the answer and then we could use that to perform the rescue operation hmm Could I potentially use the key to just step into the castle world and see what the area actually looks like? Um, 
Hmm. Or would I also have to be alone to do that? For that matter, can you use the key to just leave? <laughs> uh... I'm going to say you can't use the key to just straight bounce, but it is interesting if you can use the key to look around a little bit. Hmm. Um, I mean, the way I'm viewing this is the castle world is like a somewhat mirrored version of the real world, at least in some aspects. Mm -hmm. And if, well, my character wouldn't particularly know this, but if the, the current vassal is a cop, it would still be, like, the key world would still be very prison-like, detention facility-like, so it may not actually help me. Mm -hmm. um, no, no, I, I, I have an idea for this. Um, okay. But yeah, so if, if Harry can use the key to get somewhere, uh, if Harry can be alone, he can use the key, effectively, to, like, or he can try to use the key to get into the other world. Okay, then. Uh, let's say that during my investigation earlier when I was exploring everything for, like, weak points, it was more focused on, like, unguarded, unwatched areas, which mm -hmm. I think gives the same answer. Yeah, the exercise yard. Yeah. So we'll say I went to the exercise yard to try this out as a way to escape. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, so you um, essentially uh, look around the exercise yard and you find, um, like, an abandoned like equipment shed effectively um because you know you have to have a keyhole in order to use the key um hmm. and uh when you open that door uh with the key and go through you find yourself not in a prison but in what looks to you like an ancient ruined temple somewhere um and uh looking around like, you see kind of crumbling edifices. Um, it looks kind of almost uh, Mayan or Central American to you. Um, but the most important thing you notice is that there doesn't seem to be any way out. You're just mm. almost, like, kind of trapped in here pretty much alone um, with all the exits uh, either sealed behind, uh, like, heavy stone doors that are shut or kind of like cave-ins that have filled in any potential exits. Uh, and it doesn't look like there's any way for you to get mm. out of here by yourself. Okay. Uh, in that case, I would look around uh, at whatever iconography or whatever statuary uh, is part of the temple to see, like, get a glimpse of who's, like, the owner or vassal or of this region. Yeah, um... Interesting. Yeah. Um, what would you what would you kind of notice from this? Um, you would notice that um, it looks like things have decayed a lot over time, um, and whoever like was in control here is no longer in control. Um, mm. so you would guess that it's some sort of outside force, uh, at least within the context of where you are, this old abandoned temple, um, is probably the vassal or the controller of this shard. Hmm. All right. Uh, I guess in that case, since there's nothing much I could do here... Oh, yeah, I would, of course, try to, like, pass more of these impressions on to the rest of the group. Yeah. Uh, I would then return to the mundane world and probably play out the rest of the night. Okay, sounds good. Uh, John, have you thought about uh, your covenant? Uh, was it the contact? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, uh... The old rival falling on hard times. Because remember, I'm like the successful pop star actor, mm -hmm. dude. Uh, that was the old rival. Uh, the reason why I picked that one specifically is because they have fallen on hard times. So I'm assuming they're like broke and not doing that well. And also maybe have uh, gotten into a life of crime. So there you go. <laughs> life of crime. Sounds good to me. Okay. Um... 
So yeah, so so what do you what, what do we think this old rival's name is? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know, like Edmund Chow. Let's let's do that. <laughs> All right, sounds good. That's not a real person's name, is it? No, no. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know why Edward Norton and Jay Chow's head point in my point in my head because I was thinking actors and pop stars. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, there you go. That's a good mix-up. Um, so yeah, uh, how, how do you how do you reach up reach out to this old rival of yours? I mean, I have their cell contact. Uh, the reason why I con- I'm contacting them is because I'm assuming. Uh, no, so like I'm assuming Harry's like uh, like this from what I'm hearing is in legal problems. I don't know anything uh, the supernatural is happening yet. I just say uh, he he must need money or something or but for some reason I was told uh, that police departments were contacted yet they that yet no one has a clue because you know like this, uh, someone should know because uh, they need people to contact or whatnot. So uh, I, I I assume like this the most uh, uh in the way like the dirtiest person like just the person into that dark world as like dark as in crime world as i know so i go oh uh maybe he knows some things from the underground that's why i'm calling him and seeing if i hear things <laughs> okay sounds good um he says uh when after he picks up and you kind of like have a short conversation um he essentially tells you that um, he's heard kind of through the grapevine, like it's, it's not his ballywick of crime, whatever crime he does is not super related to this. Um, but he's heard that the cops have been cracking down, especially hard on kids lately and young offenders, um, that like, you know, he's heard usually like kids could kind of get away with stuff like, Um, you know, if they were dealing drugs or, um, being essentially like used as runners for other criminals, um, or just like, you know, petty crime, like vandalism, um, uh, shoplifting, that sort of thing. Like, you know, you, you'd get, they'd essentially just like call their parents and have them come pick them up. Um, but lately a lot of kids, especially ones that he says seem like ones no one would miss uh, have just been going missing after the cops picked them up. Um, And he's heard through the grapevine about this facility. Um, I forget what I named it. I wrote it down. One sec. Uh, Youth Rehabilitation Facility in Orleans Parish uh, is where the kids are ending up. Um, Mm -hmm just from like contacts he has in the police and that sort of thing. Um, so he basically tells you that he doesn't know what, what, uh, Harry got mixed up in. Um, it could literally kind of be anything, but and um, I forget, I know. And I forget age wise. How, how old is Harry? Harry's like, about... what did we decide? Max, like 15, 16 or. Oh, yeah. Got it. Young adult, late teenager. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's what he tells you. Okay. No, so, uh, it, it does sound, it does sound really like, it, so, it sounds weird. It sounds shady. Like, right. so, uh, I, I'm, I'm like, so can I like set out to go to, uh, visit this place? Like, I'm, I'm going to ask him, like, do you know where this place is? Because it, it, it this, this sounds like an off the grid sort of prison. Uh, yeah, he says, um, he kind of knows generally where it is. Um, like, it shows up on Google Maps, like, the satellite view. If not, like, literally you can type it into Google Maps. Um, but, uh, he, he basically gives you, um, the general vicinity and you can navigate there. Um, so yeah, so you, you have the means to go there if you wish. Yeah. So yeah, no, I'm I, I, I'm uh, down to go there to find out what's up with this place. Okay. Um. All right. That sounds like 
unless there, anyone else has anything else they'd like to do. That sounds like a good place to have everyone kind of meet up um, after uh, when we kind of like uh, get into a larger group um, with Arsu and uh, Athena, um, Byron and Tina, hopefully. Um, but yeah, uh, this... Are we assuming that I would, that off camera Arsu gets whatever we need to be able to just oh, teleport yeah. to the place? Okay. Yeah, I think um, we're going to assume that uh, Arsu essentially figures out, like we might play out a little bit, you guys figuring out um, the distortion, but um, I think it's pretty safe to assume that with the information Arsu is able to gather, you guys figure it out, um, and you're going to be able to use essentially the metaverse to get there. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, is there anything else we want to cover before uh, we call it a day? Not too much. I, I... Oh, go on, John. No, no. I said I was just gonna. I was just. Gonna, uh, I, I have because I have been taking a lot of notes. I'm filling out my character sheet with like just the PDF uh, stuff. So, yeah. No. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure I'm uh, a little bit more updated the next time. <laughs> no worries. Um, <laughs> y you had everything you needed, so. Okay. Um, I think w I think that went as well as we could expect someone who's brand new to the system, uh, to do. Um. Yeah, Max. Yeah, uh, it's probably fine, but uh, I'm curious. So the next session will probably be like the jailbreak or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just curious if it's going to be uh, or how much other interaction with the characters at the uh, detention uh, juvie there's going to be because I haven't. I haven't actually met or been introduced to anyone in that facility yet. <laughs> yeah, if if you're Which interested, it seems a little weird. It does seem a little weird. Um, if it, if you're interested in talking to like someone, that's definitely something we can play out real quick. Hmm. Well, I mean, it, it plays into uh, what Merrick was talking about earlier. Is this something we should just skim over real quick? Because it's not necessarily. I'm not terribly invested in it. It just seems odd. Right, uh, but. Mm -hmm. um, but so, if you think there's some good points that we will use going forward after the jailbreak or whether I can just yeah yeah well the the main question is so um, you're supposed to have the opportunity to essentially um, this could be an opportunity to make a contact if you so wish with a different <laughs> character um, so like in that case we might want to play it out a little bit um, if you want a contact who is another kid who got picked up. Um, but if that's not the case, then we can kind of just like, uh, talk about just like briefly what you, what impression you get from talking to other kids. Yeah, let's go with the latter. Okay. Um, so yeah, so the other kids, mm -hmm. most of them don't really know, um, why they were picked up either. Like, they'll mm. tell you, like, oh, I got picked up for vandalism or truancy or shoplifting. But, like, if you, like, actually quiz them about it, like, they say, no, I haven't, like, you know, they didn't give me a phone call. I didn't get to talk to a lawyer. Like, no one told me um, uh, what I was being arrested for. I just kind of assumed, mm. you know, that I got picked up for this or that. Um and you kind of get the impression that, well, again, this is this is all very much not on the level. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Uh, sound good? Okay. Uh, and, like, the guards are probably not particularly responsive? Um, the, guards, the, the guards, like, unless you give them a reason to notice you, like, they, they try and pay as little attention to you as okay. possible. Okay if you do make yourself noticeable and like, you might even see like a kid, like try and start something with a guard or like, you know, act out in some way. Uh, hmm. A beating is swiftly delivered. Oh. Hmm. All right. Noted. Yeah. Okay. This is good information. Mm -hmm. uh, that satisfies my curiosity. Good. <laughs> All right. Uh, and on that happy note of child endangerment, uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead and call the session here. <laughs>